Hi folks, it's Andy. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Here we are for another episode of Kendo Rant. Okay, we've got some great questions for you today. We're going to jump into them in just a moment. Uh, we don't have a massive number today, so we could fire through this pretty quickly. Uh, we'll see how quickly we get through it. Um, if we get through it reasonably fast, um, I've got something else I might rant about, but we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Before I jump into these, though, don't forget, like, share, subscribe, YouTube stuff. You know all that stuff already, but most importantly, shop at kendostar.com. That is the best way to support this channel. That's my website, of course, that basically sells the best kendo equipment in the entire galaxy. Of course, I'd say that. Say this every video. Can't be the first time you're hearing about it. I'm sure everybody in your dojo, everyone in your family, everybody in the entire neighborhood already knows how brilliant Kendo Star is. So get to kendostar.com. Keep the camera rolling. Keep getting your amazing Kendo stuff. Everyone's a winner. Kendostar.com. <laughs> Okay, right, let's get to these uh, questions, shall we? <coughs> okay. Hello, Fish Sensei. I am a 52 year young, 30 plus year martial arts practitioner of Taekwondo uh, who has taken up Kendo just over a year ago. Great. Uh, I enjoy the rigor of the practice uh, and challenging myself to learn new skills. You're correct that Kendo is Kendo. The only thing that really translates from other arts is basic physical ability, flexibility, and strength. It took me a good six months to try and not to relate Kendo to other arts. Uh, but once I was able to let that go, I've gotten quite a bit better. Good. Uh, no doubt that is mostly because. I'm able to practice in a club with strong group of fourth through to sixth dan sensei who are generous and patient with teaching and not overcomplicating things helps. Yeah, of course. Um, <clears throat> uh, question. Recently, my arthritis in my left hip has been really starting to flare up um, to the point where I've nearly missed two weeks of practice, something I never do. I'm working with my doctors on a long term fix, but that re uh, may very well include hip replacement surgery. I really don't want to pause Kendall for months, but it's looking like it will, I'll be limited in what I can do for a while. What, I can say, I, what exercises can one do with limited mobility uh, to at least maintain one's skills? Okay. So I'm not a doctor. <laughs> so I ain't going to give you any sort of medical advice, of course. Um, but yeah, look, when you're out for this sort of period, obviously it doesn't, it's, it's not very nice. Look, first off, the first thing I'd say is if you are like in pain and you're not able to practice for whatever reason, if you're able to, go to the dojo anyway. Go to the dojo anyway. You'll benefit from it. Keep your foot in the door. Keep your foot in the door because it gets harder and harder to go back the longer that you're away. All right? That's one thing. Second, go to the dojo. And if you, even if you can't do anything, at least do Mitori Geiko. At least do Mitori Geiko. Mitori Geiko is a watching practice. Stay there, watch, learn. Yeah? And if you can, if you can, then... Maybe, you know, you said it's in your hip, all right? Can you sit in a chair? So if you can sit in a chair, then you could sit in a corner of the dojo whilst the class is going on. You could still do saburi, yeah? You could still do some something, yeah? Um, <clears throat> I've told, I think I've told this story a few times before on this channel, but uh, when, when my daughter was young, when she first started kendo in her dojo, when she was seven, there was an older girl that started kendo a little bit older, um, she would have been about, uh, 11 or 12 or something when she first started, um, which is late, quite late, uh, for kids over there. But, um, <clears throat> anyway, she, um, she tripped over, uh, in the dojo one day and, and broke her ankle and she spent a few months in a cast, uh, which came to the dojo three times a week still. And she sat in a chair, she did somebody or she hit the Uchikomi Dai. Um, but she, she didn't miss a single class, uh, even though she had a broken ankle. Um, so yeah, uh, don't, um, and, and actually recently my, my daughter had a sim similar experience. She sprained her ankle quite bad. She fell over at school. Um, and yeah, she just came to the door job, put her in a chair and she did, she did somebody, um, whilst, whilst the practice was happening. So 
as much as you can, keep yourself involved in the Kendall class, yeah? And then um, at home, yeah, you can do Subudi, sat down in the chair, you know, or sat down, whatever, and continue your Mitori Geiko at home as well, yeah? That means using YouTube to get the image, the impression of how Kendall should be imprinted on your brain so you can take that to the dojo when you're ready to go back and, and, and imitate it when you get back there. Okay. Uh, next one, Andy Sensi, would you explain a bit about the Ichibyoshi and how it applies in a real Shi'ai situation with small cuts and what's the best way to practice it? Thank you. So Ichibyoshi means uh, to do everything in a single rhythm, all right? So not like if it's with a big men's strike, it's not one, two, yeah? One, two, but it's one, yeah? One, one is the uh, idea of Ichibyoshi. So um, with small cuts, what you often have is you have this tendency, um, it's, it's a little bit contrived, but uh, this tendency with some people to kind of lift the shinai. They're not lifting it over the head, but they're lifting it with their wrists instead and kind of go, men, like this, kote, like this, yeah? Men, one, two, this way, yeah? Um, whereas it needs to be, pam, that way, in one beat, yeah? Um, and you, you, this can only be done if you've got proper tamir or tension in your left leg, ready to strike immediately, ready to launch, bam, at any point from your kamae. Um, a good exercise to uh, to practice this is as a subudi um, that you can do. I like to do it in my dojo, and I've done it on the channel a few times in some of the subudi along uh, videos, where you start from the, the kamae and do it with a large strike, and you can do a small strike too. But move the right foot before you move anything else. So from your right, from your kamae, right foot goes. And then at the very last minute when you can't hold your kamae any longer, men. Yeah. And obviously your left foot has to come up. It has to be cohesive or has to still coordinate. Yeah. But I think that's a good way to practice the Ichibyoshi uh, timing. Okay. Uh, Fish Sensei, when I do Subudi, I bob up and down a bit. It's not extreme. My Sensei hasn't said anything about it, but I see myself in the mirror and it looks off. Is it, uh, is it unavoidable that there's a little bobbing of the head or is there a problem with my footwork? So probably, probably you're not really pushing from your left leg enough and it's there's a bit too much weight on your right leg as you go forward, uh, which would it, it, lead to this sort of bobbing up and down. Yeah, or you're bending your knees as you push forward. Um, it, I mean, it doesn't have to be like, laser precise but generally when you're doing stability you, your head shouldn't really be bobbing up and down too much okay uh, the problem is definitely stemming from from how you're using the left leg uh, and whether you're driving your hips forward or whether they're going down up up down sort of thing as you move forward and back all right but it depends how extreme it is you know if it's like that much like that much you know, that's not so bad, right? But if it's like, ooh, 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 like that, and then, <laughs> you know? Uh, next one, hello, Fish Sensei. No rant this time, but I did want to take a moment to remind you that we, the Kendo community, really do appreciate the time and effort you put into producing this content and managing the stresses this kind of spotlight puts on you. <laughs> that's a really wonderful thing of you to say. Uh, I know there are times you probably feel like you're be beating a dead horse with either repetitive questions, hypothetical situations, or just good old-fashioned belligerence, but I can't imagine it's easy or even enjoyable week after week. Either way, take a deep breath and keep doing what you're doing. All the best to you and your family and happy holidays uh, from the guy who took the screenshot of your face you used in there, we have to stop this video thumbnail. <laughs> Thank you very much. That's that's very, very nice of you to say. I very, very much appreciate it, actually. Uh, and if I do get to rant on something else after this, uh, it kind of ties into this a bit. Uh, because, yeah, um, look, <clears throat> I do enjoy doing this. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it. Um, I really, really, um, I love Kendall. I love it. Um, and I want to share that with everybody. Um, I've been very lucky to have experiences that not everybody can have. And, and the whole point of this is that I get, uh, you know, is for me to share that with you. Um, I'm not right about everything. Might be wrong about a lot of stuff. The stuff I look at that I did sort of five or six years ago now, and I'm a bit like, mm, probably would do that differently. There's nothing glaring, thankfully. But um, if it was, I'd just take it down. But, you know, it, it, it yeah, it can be. Um, you know, th there's, 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 there are times when it's a little bit, 
annoying uh, or stressful. And it's never the questions. It's not like, I don't mind getting the same question. I don't mind getting the same question, right? I don't, because who's watched every episode of Kendall Run? Nobody, right? Except me, because I've, obviously, right? I mean, when I say nobody, I mean, everybody has watched every episode of Kendall Run, right? <laughs> but look, I get it, right? It might be a question that I answered six months ago or three years ago. I don't mind answering that question again, right? That's what I'm that's that's what I've got this channel for. It's 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 supposed to be supposed to be here so that you can openly ask questions to me. I don't mind doing that. So that I don't ever find that sort of annoying or something like that. What I find sort of a little bit grating is when it's like, you know, when it, I don't even find it great. And it's, it's kind of funny really is when people hear stuff that I didn't say, um, like they've already made a prejudgment, like a lot of the stuff around surrounding the blocking or like the Uchi Otoshi, uh, no, it wasn't Uchi Otoshi, it was Kiri Otoshi, wasn't it? Sort of thing that happened last year. Um, was it last year, earlier this year when I said that it's not in the Kendo book and then everyone said that everyone, not everyone, one or two people got triggered and decided that I'd said you're not allowed to do it. It's different to what I said. So, you know, that can be a little bit great, and especially when sometimes it gets a little bit personal. Um, sometimes people do write, you know, sort of personal stuff. They'll, they'll try and bring up clips from videos that I'm in or like even bring up old Shi'i of mine um, that, I, you know, it's like, doesn't prove the point, like, but, <laughs> but uh, it's, it comes with the territory. I can deal with it. If I couldn't, I wouldn't do this, right? But I do really appreciate what your, um, what your message is about. I really do. Uh, so thank you. And I th thank you for, for watching and, and, and continuing to support, support what I'm doing. I very much appreciate it. I really do. Okay, uh, this is the last question already. Um, so uh, we'll do this and then I will I think I'll rant on something else that's been doing my head in. So, right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Miss Sensei, thanks so much for uh, letting me badger you about Zanshin throughout year, the year. No problem. Uh, my uh, developing Kendall brain just wasn't getting it. I passed both Ikkyu and Shodan, uh, Shodan this year. I'd like to give you at least some of the credit. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> giving you review my video uh, of myself and my friend, as well as answering all the questions I put your way. Good. Uh, I'm looking forward to my Nidan test next year and had a few questions. One, I feel as though I understand the idea of working into better, working to better my Kentai Ichi, uh, Tenuichi and footwork in general, <clears throat> but I'm wondering if there are any common pitfalls that happen when someone is training towards Nidan. Two, I'm not a spring chicken, but I feel like uh, I've got about a decade ahead of me to tr try for some truly some highly uh, competitive kendo. No idea if I've got the kendo chops, but I want to give it a try. Good. Uh, I know that I know the time one can devote is a huge factor and I'm planning to devote a lot of it to Kendall, but can you share what some of the training schedules and activities look like for someone who does compete nationally or higher? Uh, here's what I'm doing so far uh, to that end. I watch high level kendo every day. I attend all the kendo classes that fit my schedule, but there isn't a lot where I live. So I'm organizing and practice for those off days. I'm also considering moving into the, in the next couple of years just to be around more kendo. I do at home practice nearly every day, including Subiri footwork. And I've made a dummy as well uh, that's helping mostly with Tenuchi, Tenuchi and a bit with uchi, Uchimai, Uchimai, Uchima. Yeah, anyway, uh, uh, distance, I think is what you mean. Uh, at the beginning of the new year, I'm also organizing additional practice for those that want more. Uh, Kendall, apologies for the uh, novel of a question. Thanks for all you do. Happy holidays to you and family. Thank you very much. That's very nice of you. So, um, <clears throat> Nidan, biggest pitfalls for Nidan. I think um, it's that people, people struggle with Nidan the most. Um, because they just do the same thing that they did for Shodan, which is kind of natural and it is a lot of what you do in the gradings anyway. But like, I think for Nidan, like you can get through, th through Shodan just by hitting men, right? You don't really have to show any other waza. You could just do men, right? But if you just do men over and over again in a Nidan exam, it doesn't look great. So I think what most panels are looking for is that you have some understanding that there's, there's you know, that, that there's different types of waza that could be applied in different situations. It doesn't mean you have to use them in the perfect situation every time, 
But if you can pop out an, a, a couple of different wazai in the grading, then and you can do it properly with good kikentai no ichi, proper tenuchi, uh, then then you'll probably pass. Um, <clears throat> about your question about high level training, um, obviously someone competing nationally um, or higher, everyone has a different type of schedule and depends on the 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 team, of course. Now I had a very different type of career. In, in the national team, my national team, I was very different to how most people have it because I lived in Japan for most of it. Um, so I was training a lot, like eight, nine times a week. I was training in the mornings and in the evenings because I had access to that. Um, I had access to very high level senseis. I had access to very high level players. Um, and yeah, I just like proper lived and breathed Kendall. Um, but you know, obviously, yeah. I think I think you're on the right track, though. I think all the stuff that you're doing already, I think, is the right thing to be doing. I really do. Um, I think you know, your mitori geiko is a big part of it. I think the only thing I'd add to it is review review your own Kendall. Uh, you need to you need to make sure you are um, videoing your own Kendall and you are. Um, reviewing it and comparing it to the the high level kendo that you see on youtube um and is it going in the direction you want it to it's a super super important aspect um and i think it's um it's 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 one of the the keys to improving faster um but yeah uh you know get yourself like a little a little phone tripod thing take your phone put it in the corner of the dojo ask sense it and stuff if it's okay and stuff like that and just record it and I'm not just talking about your jigeko, yeah, because that it's really easy to turn into just like a, a a sort of ego massage and just look at your own jigeko and be like, oh yeah, I battered that guy, sort of thing. It's really easy to do that, and I'm I'm saying that from experience. You have to film everything, film your film your saburi, film your kirikaishi, film film your uchikomi, your kihon, and be like, is that the kirikaishi I really want to be doing, or not? And then you know take that and use it in your next practice. Okay, um, and I wish you all the best of luck with it. I think you'll do great. All right, good stuff. Okay, uh, we still got a bit of time, uh, so I think I'm going to bring this up. I think we're going to talk about it. Right. So, okay, so this is something I've wanted to sort of rant about a little bit for a while. Um, this is uh, this this isn't. It's not this specific thing. And the person that posted this this is on this is on Reddit, by the way, on Reddit's uh, the Kendall Reddit. Um, this isn't in any way towards the person that posted this. They've, they've posted a very, very valid question. Um, and and uh, what I want to talk about is the issues surrounding it, all right? Um, so it's not necessarily targeted anyone specific in this sort of thread. I'm going to blur stuff so that people can't see who's who and stuff like that. But um, I think a, a really interesting point is raised and it's something that I've talked about before and I feel quite strongly about it. So I want to rant about it because this is Kendall Rant is my show. So the uh, the issue surrounds uh, the last All Japan Championships. The question is, is there any thought on this Hikimen Ippon in regards to current COVID regulations? All right. So um, let's watch the Ippon that's, that's been talked about first. Okay, that's it. Okay, so um, let's recap it, right? White player comes into uh, Tsubazeriai defending. They they almost get to proper Tsubazeriai, not quite. Red player um, ends up with his Shinai on the other side, called Gyakukosa. And then uh, takes a step back, starts to step back, but in, instead seizes a, seizes a chance for Hikimen. Okay, and hits Hikimen. Okay. So that's the that's the that's the the point we're talking about. Um, we'll just go to the uh, we'll go to the original uh, the the OP's um, comment on it. He says, "To my eyes, upon reaching the close distance, distance technically to the eye, Mister Goto engages in Gakukosa and clearly steps backwards as if to separate, then strikes Hikimen. Yeah, that's that's what we saw. Yeah, uh, though these those preceding actions might negate Ippon. No, uh, I'd see this as at least a grey area Ippon with the COVID guidelines. But all three Shinpan raised the flag without hesitation. What do you think they see or interpret that I'm missing? Does 
uh, simply not enough time elapsed for the Gyakukosa and initial retreat to matter, or maybe the fact that Mr. Nishimura remains in place when Mr. Goto takes his step backwards is a factor. My guess would be that it's a momentum thing, the engagement didn't reach an adequate point of stillness or true to the ZEI engagement for the COVID regulations to be at play. Any thoughts? It's a fantastic question. I think you've summarised that pretty, pretty well, to be honest. I think you've, you've picked that up pretty well. I do think there's uh, some points there. Now, this rant I'm about to go on, it's not really about the COVID regulations. It's just that's what we're talking about here. All right. Now, let me talk to you about my interaction on this this subreddit. I don't normally do stuff like this. I'm trying it out. Let's see if it works. Um, but anyway, um, I do comment. I am active on this, this subreddit, but uh, I don't normally like to bring it up on my YouTube channel is what I'm saying. But anyway, uh, I think that tournaments like this give us a fantastic opportunity to see the best Shinban in the world demonstrate to us how the rules should be interpreted and applied. We often make the mistake of over applying rules that should really be applied in the context of the match and the obvious intentions, motives of the players. This includes the recent amendments it's clear that Mr. Godot was not trying to waste time in Super Zeri I excessively, or, uh, sorry, waste time in Super Zeri I excessively use Gakukosa to avoid a strike or uh, otherwise abuse the rules at all. He was simply engaging in the Shi'ai actively and earnestly. It was a fantastic and clear one. All right, that's my opinion on this, right? Uh, original poster says, thank you for your response. I'm no, I, I, I'm no doubt the Shimpan's judgment, rather my own. Yeah, I can see that's what you're saying. Um, I think your point about considering the obvious intention of the players is key. Yeah. Um, I wonder if we'll uh, ever see virtual international Shimpan seminar having the same authority figures who presented the COVID regulation on YouTube now present case studies of them being well or less well applied in actual matches could be an efficient way to spread some clarity. Yeah, uh, I think that's a really good point. Um, look, before I go further, the point I'm getting at here, and here's where I'm trying to run, right? Here's where I'm my point on this, all right? I have a real issue with this kind of internet. Now, this is not towards the original post. The original post has said clearly they're not doubting the chimpanzee's judgment. They're just trying to understand how they arrived at it. Great. That is great. That is the way you should be looking at it. I think, I think I totally agree with you. What I do have an issue with, and there are other, this isn't really that is an issue in this thread, it's just something that came up in my mind, is this sort of pattern of those shimpan are wrong. I know better than the shimpan. And that's what it boils down to with a lot of people when they look at these, they're like, well, why, is, why have they not applied the rules properly? And it's like, well, you know, <laughs> these new regulations are reasonably... Um, vague, okay? And they are designed to be interpreted by experienced Shimpan. Luckily, as I've said in this message, we have got this fantastic um, ability to watch matches on YouTube and see the best Shimpan in the world give us a demonstration as to how these should be interpreted and applied. All right. So we've kind of got this international Shimpan seminar already, right? Because we have these examples there. They're there for us. Zen Kenan's putting them up there. There's other channels putting them up there. We can see exactly why and how these, you know, not necessarily why, but we can see how these rules are being applied and interpreted. All right. Now, anyone who's doing Shimpan should be regularly doing that. All right. They should be regularly doing that because they need, you know, the, the, you need to be able to understand how these rules need to be interpreted and applied. And to do that, you need to use the examples given to us by the, the experts. All right. <laughs> so that's my first thing. Um, so like, the reason I'm coming at this is because sort of later, you know, we've got more comments saying, um, I understand that separating for after one breath, you're not allowed to attack. Is that correct? Um, and it's sort of correct. So here's where the things come in, in a bit confusion is this idea of one breath, right? This idea of one breath. So they've, they've changed it a bit since they first started saying it, that once you get to Tsubazeri Eye, that, you know, you've got to make a Hikiwaza within a one breath, one breath time. Now that is intentionally vague and to be used at the Shimpan's discretion. It's not what you think is one breath or what I think is one breath, right? It's what the Shimpan think is appropriate to make a strike. It's not literally one breath, by the way. Yeah, it's not literally one breath. It's an amount of time that the Shimpan think is appropriate, all right? And yeah, that's expressed in the term one breath because one breath isn't a set. 
unit of measurement, is it? Yeah. So the idea is of these, not just these rules, but lots of the rules surround, especially surrounding hand soccer, unless they're objective hand soccer, like stepping out the court, dropping the shinai, stuff like that. But subjective hand soccer, like unfair play, unfair to the these sort of things, these are based on the experience and judgment of the shimpan. All right. So they're supposed to be done like that. And the, the, that, that judgment is supposed to be made in the context of the Shi'ai, right? And we've had this conversation before about the blocking thing, yeah? Um, because there is, a, there is a contingent out there. I know some of you out there want them to have blocking taken out of the of kendo and said that it's handsoccer if you block it all. Or in this case, maybe if you do any hikiwaza, it should be handsoccer. I know there's a contingent of you out there that want that, but that isn't, that's clearly not how these rules are supposed to be intended as we are given as per the demonstration from the Zen Kennen. All right. So the, uh, you know, the context of the Shia is what matters, right? Are these players trying to play unfairly? Are they trying to abuse the rules? Are they trying to um, avoid receiving a strike? Are they trying to avoid engaging in the match, right? That is clearly not what happened in this case. Right? It is clearly not what happened in this case, right? It's not that, right? This, yes, they went to Gyakukosa. Was he like trying to use that to waste time and re avoid receiving a strike? No, he wasn't. They happened to end up in Gyakukosa as part of the back and forth of the Shi'ai. One, yes, he took a step back. He started to step back. His opponent didn't move. His opponent was so, looks like, I might be wrong, might be wrong, I appreciate that, but his opponent seemed to have been just switched off, didn't start to step back, so he took the chance for Hikimen and he hit it. Shimpan thought, yeah, that's fair enough, and they gave him the point. The correct way, <laughs> if you want to get better at kendo and understanding how the rules should be applied and being better at shimpanning, the correct way to interpret that scene that unfolded under your in front of your eyes is oh that's how the rules are supposed to be applied right <laughs> if the, if for some reason it's unclear unclear that is it's not wait a minute wait a minute they got that wrong did they though i'm not saying that they never get it wrong i'm not saying that the shimpan never get it wrong sometimes they do sometimes they do but is it likely? If we look at the overall context of high-level Shi'ai in Japan, this kind of hikimen is often awarded, right? It's often awarded. It's not like both of the players were in mid-separation. They came to this side, went to Gyakukosa momentarily. Went, <laughs> went to Gyakukosa mo momentarily. One started to step back, this one didn't, so bam, hikimen. Uh, how is that a breach of the COVID rules? I don't think it is. All right. I don't think it is. So that's, that's my rant here. Isn't about the rules just to be very clear. My rant here is how we on the other side of the world, watching this on YouTube seem to think we're picking up on some mistake that those shimpan have missed. Yeah. They sometimes make mistakes, right? They sometimes do. But if you watch the whole thing, and not just that, like the whole context of Shi'ai in Japan right now, the top level Shi'ai, you'll see that these uh, points are often judged in this way, right? It's not the same. It's, it's, it's like there was a, another one recently with the, you know, why aren't more hand soccer given for the, for the blocking? It says you shouldn't block. It doesn't say you shouldn't block. It says you shouldn't block and avoid the Shi'ai, avoid the Shoba, sorry, yeah? So as I said, I'm re really clearly, I'm not talking about the original poster of this. All right. I'm not, I'm not talking about that. Um, I'm, I, I agree with the way that that person is uh, interpreting uh, the way they're looking at this. What I'm just wary of is this sort of point of view of, you know, well, the shimpan must have made a mistake and I know better. Do you though? That's the question. You should ask yourself.
Okay. <laughs> Happens a lot. And I, I've made this before. I've done a video called how to be a better Shimpan. You know, it's like the whole world championships thing. You know, people often whinge about the world championships uh, refereeing. They even re whinge about the all Japan championships refereeing. But in the day, if the referees say it's Ibon, it's Ibon. If they don't, it's not. It's, it doesn't matter what any of us think. That isn't how Kendo works. All right, we don't have any of this VR, VAR, we don't have player appeals, we don't have any of that, right? It's up to the shimpan. If they think it fits the rules and it's Ippon, it's Ippon. If they don't, it's not, right? Do they make mistakes? Yes. Are some shimpan better than others? Yes. Are the All Japans refereed by the best shimpan in the world? Yes, right? <laughs> so that's it. That's my rant. That's my rant. <laughs> I don't. I didn't even make a point. Yeah, but next time you're watching videos on YouTube, you see some sort of shimpan decision you're not so sure about. Think to yourself: Are they wrong or am I? <laughs> Have a great weekend, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Like, share, subscribe. Shop at Kendo Star. See you next time. Bye bye.